live right now. Hello and welcome to St. Ignatius Field. Uh, this is our fourth game of the year. Sadly, we're one and two on the year, but uh, tonight we face Aurora Christian for our homecoming game, and uh, we've got the national anthem going on. We'll take, so a quick break here. take a quick break here. Quick break. Who's screaming over there? There's the national anthem brought to you by our uh, own fellow classmate, Karina Rubio. Very I'm Teddy Hans, done. play by play for tonight, and uh, Matthew Berghoff, my color analyst. Good to have you here again. Nice to see you, buddy. And uh, night, better night than last week. Last night, last week it was 40 degrees and raining, and that was just not not fun. We lost the game, 16 to 14. Nice weather out tonight. Uh, no need for a, a heavy jacket, and uh, should be a great great night. Um, we face an Aurora Christian team who's got a quarterback who is 6'4 and 230 pounds. So this kid can play. His name is Austin Bray. And we saw him in warm-ups. He looks like he can throw the football. Yeah, I mean, really, just a quick comparison right off the bat here. Cam Noon of the Carolina Panthers and Auburn University. Um, really, just a big guy, pocket presence, and he seems like he has some wheels, too, so he might be able to move. But uh, uh, really a big threat on offense there for the – for the, yeah, Eagles? for the Eagles? The Eagles. Uh, quickly, I believe we're going to go to a sideline report from Malik Jackson. I may be mistaken, but uh, join us back in a second. Hello, this is Malik Jackson joining you from the van of w of WPSN. Uh, today we have a CCL white division matchup between the Aurora Christian Eagles and the St. Ignatius Wolfpack. Um, teams looking like... The past three games that the Aurora Christian team has played was Sen High School back on August 29th, and they won that game 42-6. The second game that they played was against Urban Prep. They won that game 49-6, and they played Lake Forest Academy, who was also in the CCL, and won 35-33. The St. Ignatius Wolfpack has played three games, and they are now 1-2. and two. And I have a statement here from Louis Burek about the first – homecoming game that they have ever played here at this at this stadium he says that we are very excited about this game he's very excited to play and back to my counterparts here's the kickoff <laughs> we're kicking off to the Eagles as you heard here's the return up the left side. He's wow. got running room. Uh oh. And he's across midfield. He's to the sideline and they get him out of bounds at about the uh, 35. So they made it to the 35 in their own territory and the opening kickoff, and that's not uh that's not a great way to start the game here for the Wolfpack. They're back there by the quick back, uh Nick Edlund. Uh it's some moves out there and that'll give the Eagles some great, great, great field position here to open up this ball game. So we'll see how Austin Bray does. He looks like he can play. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to. God, he's huge. Look at him. The big guy. He is massive. He is a, like a, he's a presence out there. That is like without a doubt for sure. Anything else. Hold up. Ran out to the right side. He's still on the move. And he's tackled just at about the 
three yard line. It looked like you went out of bounds. Dun did you see that? Not quite sure, you know. I guess uh, refs thought otherwise, but that's taken in there by wide receiver number 81, uh, Jacoby Maxwell. Brings him down to the three yard line here. Just on their heels early. So they're down to the three yard line. The Eagles are 3 0 on the season. They have two wins against public school teams and uh, a win last week 35 to 33. And here's a snap. He's looking to pass out to the left side. Cannot find his man. No flags. And uh, incomplete pass there. So second down. Nice play there by number 16, Tim Plowman, the sophomore D-back. You get in there quick to uh, break up the pass. Here. So second and goal coming up. So they went to the pass on first and goal. Let's see what they do here. They got two wide receivers set out to, no, they got three out to the left side, two on the right. So no backs in the backfield. And there's a snap. Nice rush there, but they can't get him. Bray scrambles, looking for some room. He gets, oh, no, he is not taken down. Looked like a knee might have been down, but it wasn't. He's still got some room. And he will throw it in the back of the end zone, and it is caught. Wow. How about that? No. No, it's not. That's out of bounds. They're saying it was caught, but it was out of bounds. But gee, that scramble was unbelievable. Austin Gray, or Austin Bray, excuse me, just <laughs> you look like Johnny Manziel back there, just a much bigger juking his way around. Tackles. Yeah, it looks like he got taken down around the yeah. 15, and so uh, we had Bo back in there rushing him. He uh, almost took him down, but yeah, he, he seems like he a hard man down. to tackle. Yeah, I mean, probably real slippery, even even despite his uh, large figure back there, uh, might be a hard man to bring down. So third and goal. This would be a huge stop for the Wolf back here. Let's see what they do here. Here's the snap, and he hands it off to the back, and he is in there. That is number seven, I believe, Nick Edlund, the same man that returned the kickoff. So a handoff right up the middle, and they strike early, and it's six to nothing Eagles. Play off the acute uh, of the RB dive there. Just punches it in. So here's the extra point that is going to be attempted by number eight, it looks maybe nine. Eight. Eight. Nick Van Gleis. And the kick is up and it is through the uprights. So seven nothing, Eagles. Let's see what the offense can do to, uh, that's been our struggle the first three games, has been our offense. Yeah, it's been. You know, we, had a, we had a defensive touchdown last week out of two touchdowns, and the final score was 16 to 14. But, um, so one was, was a pick needed? six by Mike Weber. And uh, the offense is looking to get more production than they have the first three games. I didn't realize I was saying, I thought you were saying stuff. So the Eagles getting ready to kick off to the Wolfpack. So we got Sonnen back, and it looks like, who is that back there as well? A short kick. I think it's Weber, and Weber has it. And uh, he finds some running room. He's up the right sideline, still evading tacklers, and he gets to about the 48. Had a nice run back there by number 26, Mike Weber. Done a great job taking that ball back and making something out of that short kick and making them pay. Uh, special teams here so far not look too good so uh, we'll see if uh, Wolfpack can capitalize on their uh, opportunities there. So a couple of juniors were back to receive that kick, Sonnen and um, Weber 
And the starting quarterback is also junior Ryan Coolidge. He's looking to pass, and it is deflected there. Number 39 for the Eagles. Uh, Jeremiah Wright, 5'6 corner out of, uh, well, I'm not sure where he's on. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, either way. Nice play. Made a nice play in there, that's for sure. So second and 10 after the incomplete pass. And Coolidge receives the snap, and he hands it off up the middle. There was a hard hit there. And a couple of yards there by Brendan McNally. Just taking a look here at Austin Bray, the, the quarterback for Aurora Christian, as he's talking to his coach here on, on, on the sidelines. He is an imposing figure here. Oh, yeah. Him he's a big, he looks like the biggest guy on that sideline. Closer up, it's even more impressive that he would play a skill yeah. position like quarterback. So there's our handoff up the middle. McNally fights his way. Oh, there's the ball. It looked like he was down before was the ball down, came yeah. out. He had, his, he had his knee down. Uh, down by contact. Nevertheless, it might still be fourth down. I don't think they're moving the chains, and they are not. It's close. They got about fourth and two. They will go for it. Well, so Coolidge is out there. I don't know about this decision. Well, with the way that Aurora was moving the change, they may as well go for it. That is true. And see if they can make something happen. Here's a big play. So here's the snap, and it is a handoff to McNally. It looks like he got stuffed. Now he did get the first down. So they will move the chains. They move. They went on fourth down a lot in that first game against uh, Walter Payton at Toyota Park. They sure did, and uh, most of the time it worked as it as it did right there. Uh, now from our vantage point, it didn't really seem like he got it, but you know, it's only two yards, so he was able to punch it up there and uh, make something happen. So there's a there's a good call from Coach OC, and uh, let's see what they can do here on this drive. Yeah, and like you said, we don't want to give the ball back to the Eagles so quickly. There's a pass out to DeLeo. And uh, gain of about six, I believe. Hard to tell the yardage gained at our vantage point, but. Nice little quick slant route to uh, Frankie DeLeo. Making a nice play and just bashing his way for a couple extra yards after catch. So that's what you like to see out of the senior early on here. So eight yards on the pass, second and two, with 8.50 left in the first. And Coolidge will keep it himself. And he got a nice gain on the play. So that looks like another first down. That's a nice play there for sure. Ryan Coolidge. You know, he had the running back out. He had the option to pitch it, but he decided to keep it himself. And he had some, some nice yards on the play. So they're moving the chains again. Yeah, well, once again, as I've been seeing here all season, is when they bring in that slot receiver around in the backfield as that third option on these plays here, it really looks like that... Uh, if you pitch it out to him, he could really have some space. But uh, obviously, let's see what the boys can do here. First and 10, and it's a little screen pass out to DeLeo. DeLeo is tackled it around the line of scrimmage. Some loud and proud Aurora Christian fans down in the, down in the visitor's bleachers. It's a long drive out here. It is, Aurora. yeah. It's actually a loss of one on the play. So second and 11, coming up for the Wolfpack. Much nicer night than last week, that's for sure. Brutal, brutal last it's a week. Beautiful sky, it's kind of, sun's kind of. Red tinge. Kind of going down now, but. So here's the pass out to the right side. It's intercepted! Oh no! And he is off to the races, the 40, the 30, the 20. The 10, and he is in there. That's number seven. Nick Edlin making plays Edlin here in the get go. It looks like that pack's got uh, batted around the line of scrimmage. At least I heard a pretty big noise when, uh, when the ball was released. But either way, uh, Nick Edlin, the speedy defensive back, also a uh, also a halfback, making plays here in the in the early going. So. Right when Ignatius is just kind of pushing in the scoring position. Uh, fortunately, there's a little swing of momentum there, and now they're down 13 nothing. So the extra point is about ready to go, and it is up, and it is good. It looks is like it? It's good. It's no, it's not good. 
Now Van Gleis put it wide left there. So uh, so Edlin has two touchdowns on both sides of the ball. And it has a touchdown on each side of the ball, but it's got two in total. <laughs> yep. This is a good one. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you. Just making sure that you know what you're yeah. talking about. Making me look stupid <laughs> in front of all our fans. <laughs> 735 left all of our loyal fans. Yeah. 13 to nothing the score. Eagles in the lead. The Aurora Christian Ball Boys are uh, doing some good work here. <laughs> Catching passes on the sideline. Oh, oh the ref oh, tried to go for a one-handed grab there. Couldn't get it. That would have been impressive. Uh, more impressive than the start we've seen here from the Wolfpack, yeah. but uh, that's not to say that they can't turn around. Well, like you said, we were moving the chains pretty good, so that is good to see. You know, we haven't seen a lot of that. It's, you know, consecutive uh, first downs and moving the ball, except for that one mistake. I just say they could turn around here. I'm sure that they can. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> I'm sorry about that, ladies and gents. You said a little yawn sneak out. A little tired after hockey practice. A nice boot. Sonin's got the ball at the five. He'll look for a good return. Oh, he gets stuffed at the 15. Great play there for number two, it looked like. No, 39, excuse me. I think that was number two. I don't think they had as good of a view up in the press box yeah. as we do right here, but that would be Zach Bosek. The uh, sophomore. Oh, we got a sophomore making some plays. Making a nice play. So let's see what we can do here deep in our own territory. Here's a snap, and they hand it off up the middle for no gain. He's absolutely stuffed. It was actually a loss of a couple of yards. So McNally is not able to do anything with that run there, and they, they run that play a lot. They run the you know the stuff run play up the uh, middle. Uh, triple option. And it, it rarely gains any more than about four or five yards. Yeah, really unfortunately that seems to be the case. Uh, obviously it's just kind of a pounding it, pounding it along offense that they yeah. got going here, but. So second and 11, and uh, Coolidge will keep it himself and he'll pitch it. And uh, Mike Weber, couple yards on the play they get back to where they originally were so it looks like it'll be third and ten well it's that pitch that I was talking about for the past few games here but uh that time it just wasn't happening as uh as the uh as uh no defensive players on Rory Christian knew that they would run the ball and Punched it in there real quick. Yeah, I saw that one coming from a mile away. Here's a snap on third and ten. And they'll hand it off to Weber. Weber's got no running room, and he is taken down in the backfield a mile away from the line of scrimmage. So we will punt this one away as it is about fourth and 17. Really got the Wolfpack on their heels here early on. Waving for number 77 on the Eagles to get off the field as it would have been too many men. But Brock Whalen had to snap his way off. Low. Punt is a pretty good one, though. And it'll go to about the 40. So the punt there from Chris Creed. But nonetheless, they are starting in their own territory here on another drive. Once again, Aurora Christian just making some plays happen here. They're gonna have great field position here once again. Yeah. <laughs> ha. Great field position here once again. Ball down on the uh, ball down on the 37. So Austin Bray goes to work with 522 left in the first. They're on their own 37. And uh, I'm gonna guess he's gonna go with the pass here as there are no backs in the backfield. The movement on yeah. the line. And he's scrambling. 
out to the right side. Look at that pass. Oh, he drops it, but on the run, that was a great pass, number two. That's Zach Bosick. It's a gift. It's a gift for us. Wide open downfield, and he just wasn't able to hang on to the ball. Hit him in the numbers. Now, granted, though, he had Mike Weber coming, closing in on him about to uh, flatten him, so I guess he got uh, ants in his pants about that huh. one. So like, <laughs> like we said, there was movement on the line, but no flag thrown. Stopping a flag thrown all, all game. Setting the motion, and it's a handoff up the middle. And there's uh, there's our boy, excuse me, Edlund, Nick Edlund, with a gain of about five. So third and five here. As the Wolves Den uh, fan section, not bad. Yeah, it's a decent turnout. It's a nice night, why not? I'm sure next week for against Loyola it'll be oh, pretty it'll be packed. packed. It's always a big game. Set in motion is Edlund, and the snap is a little high, but Bray handles it, and he passes out to the right. That's Zach Bosick. A nice hit. They may have gotten the first, but a nice hit there by Got Frank DeLeo. Label there by Lucas Boback, oh, number me. 55. Bobak with the hit, and that was crushing right there. Yeah, it really was. Put a mean hit on uh, the receiver there. That was Zach Bozik. They did get the first, and it is first and 10 from the 26. Here's a snap to Bray. He'll look to pass. And he's looking deep. And there's nobody there. P.I. maybe? I guess not. I guess he just tripped. Number 81. 81, uh, Jacoby Maxwell, who had that nice play early in the game, just tripped uh, downfield. Yeah. I didn't see if there was any contact there, but I, I suppose not if there wasn't a flag. But if we look here, the... Aurora Christian sideline really isn't half as big as Ignatius no. is. No. Just they're confident with the players that they got, and they're able to use them obviously pretty well. And when you have a quarterback like oh, like yeah. Bray, it's it's hard not to be a good team. Yeah, and there's a pass. It's out in front. Not a great pass there. Intended for number four. That's Ryan Burke. Nice play there by Nick Bradley, making it happen. So it looks like we got third and ten coming up after that incomplete pass. I'll give a quick shout out to my friend here, uh, Jimmy Herber. I, uh, Another WPSN member. Oh, yeah. Uh, big time supporter. Pal from hockey. Hmm. Might be on the same line this year, even. So Let's Adlin gets happens. the handoff. And nice stop there for a loss of about one. So it'll be fourth and 11. Nice stop there by Nick Gargano coming off the edge. It's the kind of defensive play that you want to try to uh, turn the momentum here. They are they're going to go for it. On fourth and 11, they are going to go for it here. Oh, why not, I guess? I mean, May as well. May, they may not have the field goal kicker that ha they can kick it that far, but here's Bray. And Bray's pressured there, and he's scrambling. He's going to take it himself and uh, hit there by Nick Gargano. Well, that sure held him. Uh, number 50, Pat Mulcairn, and number 73, Nick Gargano. Both linemen were downfield uh, chasing the quarterback, and were able to knock him out before he could reach out first. But Lucas Bobak, number 55, has been blitzing just about every play here, and he has really forced Bray into making some quick choices here. Yeah. I, and... Uh, no, uh, Bobak's been playing great, and he's really due for something here. So keep an eye on him for the rest of the game. So first and ten for the Wolfpack after that turnover. And uh, it's McNally up the middle and uh, uh, four yards. So sometimes that play will get some, 
some good yardage. And four yards there. Three, excuse me, second and seven. Let's see what they do here. And it is a handoff. He's got some running room. Brandon McNally gets the first down and a little more. That was about a gain of 14 or 15 for Brandon McNally. This is their first big play of the day here for the Wolfpack. Nice play. So they move the chains again. We got a first down. He needs some good, hard, uh, disciplined football. And uh, we can see him make some noise here, maybe punch it in the end zone even. You know, we haven't seen Sal Curran get a lot of playing time, but he is out to the left. And uh, see what he can do. There is a lot of movement there on the line. A couple flags thrown. And it will probably be on the Wolfpack. Uh, false start at number 78, Luca DeLeo. So second and 15, or first and 15, excuse me. Two minutes left in the first. See if we can get a score here. So first and 15. Three wide receivers out to the right, one set in motion, that's McMahon. And a handoff up the middle again. And McNally gets a few yards, about three. Second and 11 coming up here. Yeah, I think they, they got a little snake bit from, from going in the air after that interception. I guess that makes sense. They don't want to make that mistake again. Yeah, no, they're not really a passing team no. in the first place. So uh, just keep on pounding the rock might be the way to go here. They never really have been. There's a screen pass out to the right. It's Mike Weber. And he's up the right sideline. He's got some running room. And uh, looks like a first down to me. And it is. Man, is he a good player or what? Mike Weber, the junior, catches that pass right in the flat there and is able to turn on the Jets and pick up the first down and even though even a little bit more. Well, he's not a big guy, and he, he seems like he's scrappy and he can run, and he can be used in multiple different scenarios that we need him for. He's 5'10", a buck 75, so he's not the most I think I think guy, they're, but they're giving him a little bit of, on the weight. Yeah. He doesn't look 175 to me, but I could be wrong. He might be boosting him up just a little bit, but uh, crowd's fired up. Fan section doing a little. I believe that we will win. I think it was started by like, Utah State. I really? Yeah. Have I know, you ever seen that uh, video of like half the gym doing that? I have actually, yeah. I know the men's national soccer team was really using it uh, yeah. in, in the World Cup. A pretty cool cheer. Yeah, it is. Second and six here. Time winding mm. down, about 10 seconds left. Here's the snap. Oh, and he, oh. Coolidge falls a little bit, still gets the handoff off pretty cleanly. Go Coolidge went, just lost his, lost his footing just a little bit, but uh, that'll do it for the first quarter. That's pretty impressive. He's falling down and he got the hand off of, you know. Yeah, he's, he's able to make it happen. But, uh, either way. Uh, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with you after the break. So we're back here. We're in a bit of a tough situation here. Well, not really. I mean, we're, we're third and four. Well, we got to get some points up on the board. That's very true. Very true. 
So we got to move the chains. Let's see what we can do here. Set in motion is Weber. And it's McNally who will take the ball. And he's close. Sure he didn't fire away. If he, if he didn't get it, well, they're saying he got it. Yeah, no, they're saying the that he got it. So first and ten at the start of the second quarter. Cheerleaders getting all fired up. It's your job. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice little Aurora Christian leather jacket that guy's got. Here's a snap. And it's to McNally. And uh, he's still on his feet. Nice run. So a gain of seven on a run that should have, you know, gained nothing there, but he made something out of nothing, and it is second and seven. I mean, second and three. Sure did. He uh, pounded his way up there. He sure is a good back once he gets a little bit of once he gets a little bit of power under his feet. Can move that rock. So the snap oh. is fumbled. Still Wolfpack ball, but uh, there was a Aurora Christian coach that slammed his his uh, his sheet of paper down because he thought that Eagles should have had that ball. Those are just a sloppy plays that you're trying to eliminate if if you're the Wolfpack here. Yeah, third and five, loss of two. So bad uh, communication, bad handoff, snap. So third and five. At least get into field goal territory. I, you know, I don't think we're a big field goal kicking team, but let's get anything. Yeah, and he is way offsides there. A little neutral zone infraction. In, uh, infraction. Excuse me. Number That's two, Edwin. Zach Borsch. Bosick, excuse me. Edward Bosick. That's a first down. So try to uh, try to time the snap. They started to cut you off, but uh, huh. try to time the snap and uh, just kept on running. I mean. Well, it looked like he stopped, and then he kind of gave another little stutter step and went past the line. But that, that's a risky play to try and time that step. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's all about. It's going to be Troy Palmolo yeah. out there. But if you haven't been able to tell already, I sure like making comparisons up here. <laughs> so it's a painted picture for our viewers at home. So first and 10 here from the 30. And it's a screen pass out to the left. Mike Weber's got some running room. Oh, there he goes Mike. to the 10. And he's in there. So a touchdown for Mike Weber, and honestly, I'd put him as the MVP of the team so far this year. Well, I would keep using that play. They've used it twice so far, and it's worked both times for pretty nice gains, and that time even scored on it. So really that, love to see that out of Mike Weber, a big, powerful junior. 13-6 to six here. Mike Christie is back to kick the extra point. Got Liam Healy on the hold out here. Danny Moore just runs on the field to get formation set up. And here's a snap. Liam Healy with the hold. It's up, and it is good. So 13-7. And we're right back in this thing. Whole new ball game here. That's a, I mean, it's, it's a one-possession game. We just need the defense to make a stop and the offense to, offense to keep making plays. And that missed extra point by the Eagles might come back to bite him a little bit. Really could. As of the moment, that's kind of the game changer. They're only up by six. Yeah. Let's see, let's see what the D can do here. So 9.42 left in the second. Sun is completely down now. And the lights are out. Lights look great. The field looks great. Now Friday night lights. One of the... No, the defining moments of high school is uh, being out there mm -hmm. under those lights with all your closest friends. Absolutely. So take a look at that banner over there, Hail Ignatius. That's a new one, but that is pretty cool. It looks like it says, Hail Ignatius, all your friends here. I think it's trying to say that. That's our fight song. Oh. Uh, we had a pep rally today for homecoming, and the coach is telling us to give us a little... 
Give their team a little wolf's howl. Just give it a little howl. Christie with the boot. And on the 15, it's recovered. And he's still running. He tries to go up the left side. He finds a gap. He's got some runner room. There he goes. And he is off to the races. And it is a touchdown. Number 81, Jacoby Maxwell. Now, Jacoby Maxwell, you are ridiculous. <laughs> so after Devin Hester just broke the record, from stole it, took it from Deion Sanders last night, uh, we see a similar thing here today, and that's Jacoby Maxwell. Uh, I don't think he's breaking any. <laughs> I don't think he's breaking any records just yet. It but, looks uh, good though. Yep. That looks good. Just when the Wolfpack think that they're going back into this game, you know, exactly. a big play like that happens. And as I was saying earlier, both special teams here are pretty weak. So, uh, all well, the, the special team defense. Well, uh, the coverage hasn't been great. Yeah. I don't know if that's a characteristic of, of both teams here, or just something new this game. But uh, Christian's lining up for two. That's smart there, and it's it's uh, it's good. Made that happen, Austin Bray and his receiver just in the flat there and uh, punched it in. But really, I think uh, I think if you're coach uh, John O'Connor right now, what you really want to do is try to keep this uh, this guy Bray off the field because no, they oh, do yeah. have him listed as a as a D lineman as well, <laughs> but uh, hasn't taken any snaps on the on the defensive side of the ball here yet. So uh, I mean, may. This is just obviously pure speculation, but maybe they'll see Ignatius as a big threat. So, I mean, obviously, I'm sure they'd love to have him in the game at the end or, or just wherever he plays, but there's always a risk of him getting injured. So, uh, just hanging with the offense here so far and uh, keeping him off of the field is just, you know, he's a game changer. This player can make something happen. He's explosive. Every time that he's out there, you know, you get, there's like, the threat of taking it deep. So keeping him on the sidelines with his helmet off, talking to his coach would be the best game plan here. I would, I would say at least. But so they beat us all three ways. They beat us on the offensive side, the defensive side, and with their special teams. Oh, this really is a complete football team in all three phases. Looking to uh, stay perfect, four and zero. We're trying to stop them from doing that. Go 500. We're looking to go two and two. It's Sonnen back with the return, and he's tackled at about the. Uh, it's hard to tell from where we're at. Maybe about the 20. Well, it's time for the offense to make a play. And they did last time, so let's see what they can do here. I got faith in them. It's just up to them now. Yeah. This isn't, you know, this isn't the 85 Bears team we're talking about here. So, let's see if they can expose the gap here and make something happen. Christian's and got a seven-man front. Oh, yeah, here's the snap. It's off to Weber again. And a uh, nice run. Gain of about five, I think. He turned something into nothing there, which is always nice to see. Seems like he can really play. That sure does. So 9-16 left in the first half. Second and four. Here's a snap. And it's a handoff up the middle. He gets a gain on the play, and that will... Looks like it's pretty close. It's third and one. So just a little bit to go here. Clock keeps on ticking. Just keeps on churning here. Pretty comfortable up here compared to last week. We were shivering and it was, it was a whole lot nicer than it was last week. And I'm sure the fans are thinking the same thing. Pretty decent turnout. Crowds yeah. really filled in over there. And it's a dive up the middle. It might have been. Oh, it was fumbled. It's Eagle Ball. Well, nice trouble. 
They're saying it's Eagle. You know, they're still still talking about it. Oh, see, he's not pleased about that. Let's see what see what the call is. Sure. That'll be a wolfpack ball. The one ref signaled that it was Eagle ball. Uh, it's been overturned. Nevertheless, the first is out on the field still. First and ten, Wolfpack. Weber put in motion. Here's the snap. Coolidge looking to pass. Complete to Sonnen. So nice play there. All you know, dangerous. Almost picked off again. Sure was. Seems like every pass that's been, you know, not at the line of scrimmage, not a screen pass, has been a little risky. Yeah, well, always there was of the danger anytime that you throw the ball of it being intercepted. But uh, seems like the Eagles have been close every time. Yeah, there's, there's some ball hawks out there, and they're. Getting close to the ball, trying to make some plays, and uh, well, let's just see what they can keep doing now. Second and six. There's a snap, and it's a handoff to McNally, and he gets stuffed immediately. 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 Little Eddie Olchek reference there. Oh, no, maybe our viewers don't. Got to think about them as well. It's, I'm not, just just, it's not just about you. I'm just joking, viewers. You're Third all great. Five. Thanks for tuning in. I also like to thank High School Cube and all those. Oh, great watching. sponsors. Joe Osco. Jameson Sullivan. Third and five here. Here's a snap. And it is another handoff up the middle. And nothing much doing there. So the punt team will make its way out of the field. And uh, it's fourth and five. Jacoby Maxwell back to receive after his kick return. Let's see what they do here. If they see if they punt to him. Oh my goodness! I apologize for that, but let's see if they kicked him after he just, you know, showed what he could do there. Ball at the 37. Oh, the snap is high. Repeat of last week, and Creed will just fall on it. It's the second week in a row we've had a bad snap, and in the, in the pregame warm-ups, we're kind of seeing more of the same thing, where the snaps weren't always on, uh, on target. So that'll be something to work on here this week. So first and ten deep in their own territory for the Eagles. And Austin Bray, let's go to work again. Here's a snap. Over the middle, and it's picked off! That's number 16. But he's making plays out there. What a great play. Just what you love to see. Picking off a great quarterback like, like Bray. That sucks the life right out of uh, right out of the Eagle offense. It sure does. And we've got first and ten. But some work to do. Five forty-six left in the first half. Here's a snap, and it's a little screen pass out to Weber again, and there he goes again. Go on the left side, and he's headed to about the forty-five, and that play has worked time and time again. It's the bread and butter of the Wolfpack offense here, here tonight. Absolutely, it's been a positive play every single time that they've ran it, and they've even scored their lone touchdown off of it. So. Obviously, well, you don't want to milk it so bad where you just kind of overkill it, but I'll just see what they can keep doing here. First and ten here. 
at the 46. And it's a run up the middle, and there's another good gain. That's McNally. He didn't see you. Andy. There's, Andy? There's our leader, Andy Weber. Where is he? Oh, yeah, there he is. A shout out to Andy Weber helping us get this all hooked up here, here tonight. Make sure the game runs smoothly. Second and two, and it's a pass. Out to Sonnen again, he makes a grab, and there's a first down. Nice pass there by Courage, putting it just out of reach of the uh, defender. Sonnen had to come back a bit for it, but it's easy play to make. Very Except nice first play. down. Just what you like to see. And their passes have all been the same. It's been a screen pass or it's been a pass, you know, short pass to Sonnen. It's been Sonnen and Weber on the passes. It sure has been. I know Frank has a couple of receptions as well. True. And here's the snap with a new fresh set of downs. It's over the middle. It's gone oh, by yeah. Frankie Dolio, and he's in there. So what a great pass there by the junior, Ryan Coolidge. Just throws it over the top. He trusts his wide receiver. There's DeLeo to make the grab, and he's in there. Once again, one possession game, as long as Christy nails that extra point. Frankie DeLeo on the trout going downfield. Where it needs to be. Frank breaks a tackle and punches it in right into the Wolves then to some fired up supporters. And here is the extra point, and it is good. Crowd <laughs> chair to utilize the yes chant. That's a great chant. That's a real solid chant. What was, do you know where that was first used? I honestly can't tell you, but it is just one of those things where it's just universal. It is universal. Everybody who's ever been a part of it just loves it. I, I was at a Sox game, and I was sitting real close, and I looked at the Sox dugout. Sox pitcher Scott Carroll was, <laughs> was, go, was doing the yes. There's some team that would do that every time they would hit a home run. I'm trying to think who it is. I know the Dodgers like to have fun. They got their bubble machine. <laughs> that was quickly axed by MLB. Oh, they still got it going. They tried to. The MLB tried to axe it, but they couldn't. They couldn't axe it. They've still got that bubble machine rolling. Great to see that. Yeah, it's a little bit childish, but you gotta love it. It's great to see the boys having some fun. Oh yeah. Another, I believe that we will win. Chant. Oh howl. And that kick is squibbed a little bit. Not a little bit, a lot of bit. And, uh, you know, better than kicking it to Maxwell, I guess. I'm not sure if he topped the ball or if that was intentional. Maybe it was intentional. May have been. Just a quick little background on this. On this howl. My dad, he sure loves to howl, especially. Howl every morning. As I, his oldest and favorite son, Packy <laughs> for the Wolfpack, uh, you know, anytime there's a goal, anytime there's yeah. a great play, he's howling yeah. out the crowd, and, and he always gets himself prepared for the day by howling in the shower. And, uh, you know, that's a big, unique, but it works really Yeah. There's a run by Bray, and uh, that's a first down. So, oh, yeah. I mean, just being that he's such a big guy, he's got some big long legs, and those strides. It's just those strides were just majestic the way that he was <laughs> moving out there. That is Newton esque right there. <laughs> but I am telling you, folks, if you've ever seen the Carolina Panthers play, very similar to Cam Newton on the high school level here. So, first and 10 directly on the 50 yard line, right on the Wolf logo. Three widers, four set out to the left here, and one to the right for the Eagles. They're going to go to the air as much as they can. It's a pass out to the right side. It's to Maxwell. And nice play there made by Lewis Burek. 
A good high hit by Rose Bjork, taking out Max. All of our, our production van. That's amazing. <laughs> that is fantastic. Well, I'm glad that they're uh, tuning in in the van. You know, obviously they're producing it. Yeah, but they've got their. Uh, nice their, and listen. Their tech setup. Appreciate all, all the work that they do for us. Yeah. <laughs> Four high receivers out <laughs> to the right. Four Sean. One to the left. <laughs> and here's the snap. It's a pass over the middle. It's low, and it is not. It is incomplete. So third and five. Well, Teddy, here's my question for you. <laughs> if you would live most of your life in the greater uh, Chicago land area, what f what sports teams would you cheer for? Probably, probably the Chicago ones, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, our, well, our uh, buddy Sean here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's, he's a big Boston guy, so uh, well, I, I got no beef against him. He's got ants out there. there. Well, I mean, at least there's a reason. Oh, there's a run the by reason. Bray. He is off uh, the races, and he's in there easily. No problem there for Bray, as there was no coverage to stop him up the middle. And uh, easy touchdown run there, 27-14 to 14 Eagles. It's that mid-sentence about Sean's love for Boston <laughs> sports. Uh, Austin Bray uh, took another QB draw. The play that worked so well the first time, and just went those long, galloping, horse-like strides <laughs> into the end zone. Hope Sean didn't have anything in his mouth on that one, but uh, either way. So look at it go up by two touchdowns. How are the Eagles? Van Gilsey for the extra point here. <laughs> it's up and it is good. So 14 point lead for the Eagles. And uh, 255 left in the first half. Hopefully we can strike again to make this game, uh, you know, not let it get out of reach. Some guy over there with his drum was just pounding away. I think it's Sal Curran's dad who's got the drum and he's got the hat. <laughs> and he loves it. A fan favorite. God bless him. Also, a big old Nick Gargano head that yeah. floats, around the, yeah. floats around the wolf. They paid a solid amount of cash for that. Oh, yeah. I mean. Somewhere around like 70 bucks, they said. Well, that's, that. a, that's an investment, and I would say that's a pretty good one because oh, yeah. uh, fans love it. Team loves it. I'm not sure about Gargano, no, but it's a know. pretty goofy picture of him. I don't even know if he's seen it. Oh, he's seen it. Has he? He knows all about <laughs> it. <laughs> so the Wolfpack back to receive the kickoff, and they will receive it again at the start of the second half. Mm -hmm. So maybe a quick strike, a quick strike now, a quick strike mm -hmm. in the second half, and we got a tie ball game. Hope for the best. So here's the kick, and it's uh, it's not a great one. Fielded by McNally, McNally back, and uh, he's taken down at around the 32, 33. Well, here comes the offense again. Let's see what they can do. They've been more successful this week than they have. You know, besides the game against Walter Payton, the two games that we've actually played against uh, private schools, we've had trouble with our offense. And tonight it looks pretty solid except for the interception. Well, they were pretty close to the old two-minute drills. We're down at 250 left in, left in the half. Over the middle, nice pass to Weber. Uh, excuse me, I've just been informed by our all-knowledgeable, all-knowing producer Will Heron that Tinley Park is not a private school. Appreciate that, Will, and uh, if you have anything more to add, please hesitate to uh, tell us. <laughs> um, first and 10 at the 44. I'm going to go ahead and apologize for forcing that laugh. Um, you know, Sal Kern's getting a lot of playing time here today. Though. Whatever. And here's the pass. Out Hello. Of the right open. Oh, no. Bobbled it a few times. That's an off to the races type of play right there. If he's able to hold on, pass with a little bit in front of him, off of his fingertips, and bobble there just a bit. But uh, I know. It's a shame. What there. can you do? So second and ten. God, that would have been sweet, huh? 
Hey, really, what a win. And another pass, three in a row there over the middle to the Leo. It's complete, and so he's got great. some running room. He's to about the 42. Move the chains again. A great, great use of the clock here as we're down to only 214. Clock keeps moving there. See if they can get off one more play. Uh, no, I, I, was I don't. Yeah, there's now. I don't even like the two minute warning in the first place, but another pass. That's so it's deflected. That could be trouble. Right at the line of scrimmage, it was batted up into the air by an Eagle lineman. Yeah, that's a good way to stop the clock and regroup here. Second and ten. That's four passes in a row. Let's see what they do uh, again. Worked the first three times. Let's or see times. It Let's should have worked to Weber, but it didn't. Let's see if they can make something happen. Ball at the four to one. Another pass. Oh no! Excuse me. It's a handoff to McNally. Is that drop play handed off to uh, Brendan there? Pushes away for maybe four. Four being pretty generous there. Minute 35 left. As I look to move the chains again, they got third and eight. Here's a snap, and it is a pass. It's over the middle, it's complete to Frank. And he keeps fighting his way, look at him go! He's to the 36, and that's... And we are making plays happen, and there's a timeout there for the Wolfpack. Smart timeout there, 117 left. And uh, Frank DeLeo got stopped, and he just kept moving his feet and got the first down. That's, that's just TW, TW, the will to win right there. As I've been seeing here with Frank, I've been spending some more time with him as he's in my emerging classes. We go off to uh, help the help the less fortunate. But uh, as I'm getting to here, he I mean he's a big guy. He's a big strong guy. And uh, as we saw that, he's able to break some break some tackles and push his way for the first down. So that's what you love to see out out of your uh, out of your senior leaders there. Absolutely, and he plays he plays both sides of the ball really really well. He's probably one of the if not the best well-rounded player on this football team. He's a big, versatile guy, and he's able to make plays on both sides of the ball, and there's a big one right there as he uh, carried the offense on his back for a first down. Obviously, nice play by Coolidge, too, getting that ball to him. The O-line protected him, but uh, obviously, there was a guy who did all the, all the grunt work, and uh, he pushed his way in there. Yeah, the touchdown catch earlier was real nice, and he can run the ball. Nevertheless, we got first and 10 at the 27. Here's the snap, and it's handed off to Mike Weber. And a uh, loss of about four there. So the clock keeps running here. So 45 seconds left, second and 13, as they look to score. Here's the snap, and the pass play is over the middle. It's caught. Oh. Complete. Uh, there's a flag, though. So it was initially in the hands of Sonar, and it got knocked out, but there is a flag. Well, this will be interesting what this flag's all about. It came in after, after the play. After the snap, and we'll see. It's on us. Coach O'Connor doesn't agree with that one. So if we were in field goal range, that probably pushes us out of it. We're pushing way out of it now. They were on the edge of it. I don't know. I, I've seen Mike Christie pick or kick some pretty long field goals, but I don't know if he had that one in him. Well, I've seen him hit 50, but that's a that's a yeah, big number. That is, uh, not sure how, how consistent you can be at a range like that yeah. for the pros. That's pretty tough. Yeah, that's an impressive number. That's real impressive. That's a boot. 
So second and now 23 after the 10 yard uh, personal foul. 15 yards, excuse me, second and 28. 15 yarder, that is big. We got a long way to go here. You're telling Snap, me. And it is a pass play over the middle to Sonner. It is caught and dropped. Oh. He was down by contact there. It looked like when he landed, it was what knocked knocked the ball out. So he caught the ball. It was falling. And they're going to call a timeout on the Wolfpack again. It looks like that will be down by contact down now. Is there will be about third and 13 here. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe third and 14. But uh, the way Wolfpack calls their... Is that their third timeout? I think so. I would believe it is. If not, it was their second. Uh, 29 seconds here left in the half. See if they can make this uh, one possession game here before uh, no, before halftime. And with receiving the kickoff at the, at the beginning of the second half, that would really be huge if they could punch another one in right here. Or even three is a big play too. Twenty-nine seconds left exactly. And we got a third and thirteen, so a gain of ten there by Sonin. Or fifteen I should say. That was a nice gain there. <laughs> so they'll probably go to the air again here, I'd imagine. I would place my bets on that. It's been working pretty well. It is a pass. Complete. And Whoa, look at that. Goal. The little pitch play. That would have been sweet. Some trickery there is, uh, I don't know if that was planned or improvised, but either way, it was, uh, it was a pretty interesting idea. They're saying it is Eagles ball. Well, it looks like they're calling it a fumble. So Sonin caught the ball and tried to flip it back to McNally. In the process, the ball ended up out and uh, it's eagle ball 22.6 seconds left well he had that so quick I don't know if he ever had no possession but I guess yeah, I, yeah, he did. I don't know about that I mean that was real quick obviously he would if he would just keep holding on to the ball yeah. but being that they that he moved it so quick I don't know if they're able to call it that 22.6 left here in the half let's see what uh, see what the D can do it seems like he can march down the field pretty quick see if we can get Jimmy in there you know, it'd be kind of cool to see is like an absolute bomb throw and see how see how good his arm actually is. You know, I think we saw it during during the pregame warmups how lethal he can be. See how far he can bomb this ball. Got to watch the deep ball it's here. It's a bad one, and he handles it well and fires a bullet to Maxwell, and he's tackled at about the line of scrimmage a little bit in back of. It's a timeout for Christian. We'll go and talk things over and see if they can punch one downfield. Pack's really got to watch a deep ball here as uh, as Bray's got a, got himself a cannon. Because <laughs> we're getting a uh, close-up <laughs> glimpse of the Gargano poster. Of the Gargano. And that's a beauty head. right there. <laughs> <laughs> one good-looking man. Who, Gargano? Should I marry Gargano? Uh, that's illegal nowadays, so. <laughs> it's a good looking poster. So, Bray will try and go at it again. Second and 11. 17.8 left in the first half. And he will, he gets sacked there by Gargano. By the man on the poster. Brought down there, tried stepping up in the pocket, and uh, big boy Nick Gargano was able to take him down. And it looked like they were going to try the bomb there, and they call another timeout. You know, anytime that you have a quarterback with a can like that, it could just really step up in the pocket. 
fucking. Oh yeah. It's just getting ready to. Oh, that's sure. that his fourth sack of the year? I, it's, it's a pretty good number. It seems like he's getting one a game. So they're talking it over, trying to see what they're going to do here on third and 12. They're talking it over. Offense comes back out on the field. Here comes the D once again. Here comes Sean Grant. And I'm sure lovely, the, the... Lovely producer. <laughs> the defensive huddle was all about protect that, protect that bomb. Boston. Boston strong. Here's the snap. It's a little low. He handles it. And on the run, he throws it. It's complete. Just take him down, and they do. 3.1 seconds left. Number 32, Max Bonholtz. So you've got to hurry up here to try to spike this ball. I'm not sure that they have the hurry time up to. And the clock's not, not running. They do once they blow the whistles when the clock goes, so... Well, there it goes. Regardless of the that horn. horn, they were able to to spike that ball, I think, or I suppose not. So there's the first half. We'll go to commercial break, and then after commercial break, we'll be back with our sideline reporter, Malik Jackson. Hello. I'm Father Michael Caruso, the president of St. Ignatius College Prep. The Catholic Jesuit tradition of education goes back nearly to the founding of the Jesuits in 1540. At first, we focused our attention on training new members for the society. But then, in 1548, at the request of the citizens of Messina in Sicily, the Jesuits opened their first school for lay students. From the very beginning, the Jesuits set out to create schools serving students who came from every economic background. In 1869, when Father Damon founded St. Ignatius, the same ideal was still a central focus, as students from the poorest neighborhoods were welcomed into the school. There's no doubt that St. Ignatius has changed over the past 140 years, but through the stewardship of school leaders such as Father Grant and Father Rowe, what has remained a constant is the school's ability to change lives for the better. Today, the great tradition of Catholic secondary education that was such a life-changing experience for you remains the undeviating focus of all we do within the halls of 1076 West Roosevelt Road. You are part of a tradition that is meeting the goals set out in our mission statement to educate young men and women for lives of faith, love, service, and leadership, and to challenge them to intellectual excellence, integrity, and lifelong learning and growth while using God's gifts to promote social justice for the greater glory of God. Today at St. Ignatius, we are who we are because of your generous support. There are many ways to give back, such as the Tuition Assistance Program, which allows us to continue our tradition of accepting qualified students regardless of their family's ability to pay the full cost of tuition. Contributing to the annual fund allows you to support our annual operating costs. This is the fund that keeps us going. Endowments are often started by alumni in the form of class gifts or by friends and families as memorials or tributes. These endowments help fund over half of the $2.5 million in tuition assistance offered each year, support school programs, professional development, and ongoing maintenance. Planned giving through the Father Arnold Damon Society celebrates the traditions of St. Ignatius College Prep and its legacy to the future. Capital gifts are available for donors wishing to leave their legacy on a particular building or feature of the school, while commemorative gifts allow friends and family to make a gift in someone else's honor or memory. Finally, the Parent Pledge Program provides over $2 million annually to help bridge the gap between the current expense of educating each student and the cost of tuition. 
All of us at St. Ignatius are grateful for your continued support. On behalf of the entire school community, I give you my sincerest thank you and assurance of prayers. May God bless you and your families. We are St. Ignatius. We are a family. We are committed to justice and service. We are Jesuit education. And we are open to growth. We are religious. We are the mighty, mighty wolf pack. We are men and women for others. We are diverse. And we are tomorrow's future. This is Malik Jackson here from the van outside. Uh, I have a statement here from Lewis Burek, number 54, linebacker and offensive lineman, about this historic night here. Um, as you all may not know, uh, this is our first homecoming game with the stands set up. Uh, this is the first homecoming game that we have ever played here at Ignatius on a Friday night. It is a very historic night, and it is a very memorable night for the players here. This is a statement from Lewis Burek. We're really excited about finally being able to play in our backyard on Friday nights. We're confident that this is going to be a great addition for the football program and the school community as a whole. We look forward to making a lot of great memories this season. Catch number 54 out on the field. The score is 28-14. I'm Malik Jackson signing off. WPSN is taking a short audio break. Please stay with us as you watch the field. We'll be right back after the halftime for the second half of Aurora Christian versus our own Ignatius Wolfpack. Current score, 28-14.
Oh, are we live now? All right, sorry about that. Uh, we got Ellie Gerges, Annabella Coe, and Nora Thompson. Nora Thompson back after some illnesses. Good to see her back. Uh, how are you guys feeling? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm really good. It's really nice outside. So, buddy, uh, down 28-14 here at halftime. Uh, I'm going to get you back on track. Um, uh, team looks kind of shaky if it's, uh, you know, but... Just have to see well, what it's they can Austin do more Bray. Than He's picking us apart. I mean, there's nothing that we can do, it seems like, to contain Austin Bray. And I don't, I don't know how to fix the problem. You know, he can run, he can pass, he can – the whole team can do a lot of things. And, that is uh, that is for sure. You know, they're a good, well-rounded team. They've scored on all on all three uh, phases. We'll just, we'll just have to see what they can do here for the rest of the game. I mean, uh, uh, as we're – Getting paparazzi here. Yeah, right? we're, getting, we're getting some serious pictures here. People are loving the broadcast. Uh, I'm sure we got a lot of viewers. I was told by a couple teachers today they said they'd watch the broadcast from home. Just try not to sign any autographs more than anything. <laughs> it's just, you know. It's a one. It could sell. You know, it, gets, uh, it gets pretty unbelievable after a while yeah. here. So we're about ready to start. Here comes the team. Fresh three minutes put up on the clock for the halftime festivities. Are we done? Are we done here? Still going. Highschoolq.com. Yeah, that's it. We search nation. We'll be the first one. So our little fan fan group here is sticking up here. There you go. And uh, we are going to receive the ball at the start of the second half, seeing as we kicked away, uh, kicked the ball away to start the game. Try and get something going here, you know. I mean, 14 points is more than what we've got in the last couple of games. 42 the first game against Peyton, but we haven't been able to score a lot, and it seems like we're actually scoring here. It's just a shame that we're giving up a lot of points as well. Yeah, well, uh, no, just not, just not very consistent on either side of the ball here so far tonight. Uh, I mean, obviously we know that we have capable players on both sides of the ball, but... Uh, just pretty inconsistent. There's times where we've looked great, and there's times where we've looked like, you know, like a CPS a JV squad. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just uh, really inconsistent so far. But, um, I mean, we'll just have to see what happens here. Second half, down by 14. It's not, you know, it's by no means a, a titanic. No. A deficit to overcome, but uh, just really got to see what these boys are going to do here. They got to dig deep, you know, homecoming game, playing a good team that can make a can make a big time play. Yeah, they're not in our class. I believe they're in 3A. They won the state championship in 2011 and 2012, I think. Don't quote me on that, but uh, they are a good team. They're a good program. They know how to win, and it looks it shows. I mean, we haven't our our football program just came back what like 10 years ago. Um, yeah. Uh. <laughs> we just haven't had a football team where we know how to win, I guess. Well, I, I think the coaching in the past has been something that's, you know, not been very consistent. No. Uh,
homecoming with anybody? I thought Sauce was going to ask her. Is it? I don't know if he did. But. Are you two both going stag to homecoming? <laughs> I got this. Andy Scanlon. And then is Nora going with anybody? Well, that doesn't matter. I'm just Well, hey, uh, just the chicken in, just a quick test. Are we all good? And we are. Welcome back to Wolfpack Football here under the lights on the west side of Chicago. Annabelle and I reminiscing about our last uh, McDonald's run last year to homecoming. There's a nice, oh! Ooh, Frank. Frank DeLeo almost made a highlight reel one-handed catch but couldn't reel it in. So it'll be second and ten after the incomplete pass. I like the foam finger here. It's a nice little addition. I, I've never, I haven't seen these yet. Yeah, I saw them. Handing, handing them out. Very useful in the yes chant. Absolutely. Reminds me of the Drake and Josh where the, <laughs> they split the foam finger. The foam finger the Padres Padres game? Game. Yep. <laughs> Second and ten. Nothing better. <laughs> And uh, it's Coolidge on, who keeps it, right. and a uh, nice gain. He stopped there. Somebody took it. Oh, there's a oh. Let's see if it's a D-back on uh, an AC. His leg got all twisted up under that pile. Looks like he's okay. Nice That's to see. That's good to see. Real yeah. scary when those legs get you know chopped at down there. <laughs> never, never what you want. Never want to see anybody get hurt. But it's third and five. It looks shorter. You know, they say third out five at the scoreboard, but out near the chains, it looks more like third and three Opt or something like that. Optical but illusions out here. Yeah, it's hard to see. Our angle isn't the greatest. I, I don't like our angle that much. It's not, it's not, it's kind of hard to see all the way down at the other end. All right, princess. <laughs> you like belittling me on, on air? Love you it. appreciate that? Love it. There's a flag on the play. Uh, sideline reporter Malik Jackson walking by. Malik's got the easy job. He goes on once before the game and once at halftime, and then he can just do whatever he wants otherwise. Uh, that'd be a nice job. You know if we're on the air next week uh, or here it's against here. Loyola? That's a good question because High School Cube might take that game. But, you know, Loyola was ranked at the beginning of the year first in state and 49th uh, nationally. They lost to Brother Rice this year. So, they're not so they, the they, they fell off their Dang, rankings. I mean. And they play Fenwick uh, tomorrow, I believe. There's a pass out to the right side. Right. It's caught. Luke Sonnen with a great grab there. So Good job pulling that down. Feet and bounds there. They run like that fade route to the right side, and it seems like it's DeLeo and Sonnen have made great plays off that route. Yeah, it seems that they've been using uh, Frank and, uh, and Sonnen as their deep guys here, and uh, Weber taking the, you know, the screen plays yeah. and... Uh, and the curls and turning those into big games as well. So the passing game is is, is, is out Absolutely. to play here tonight. So it's a handoff to McNally. He's got Let's some go running room. Look at him go! And he's at 20 and a 10, and he's in there. So the opening drive in the second half ends in six points, hopefully seven. McNally's in. That run up the middle works, and hopefully we'll only be down by a touchdown after this extra point. Came in with the lasso into the end zone there. Took that draw from Coolidge and turned in a beautiful touchdown. So Christie, Mike Christie is back to attempt the extra point. To only put us down seven. What? What? Healy with the hold and it's up and it's good. So it is an offensive showdown here today. And 28 to 21 is the score with 10-22 left in the second half. I mean in the third quarter, excuse me. So a quick strike. That's good to see. Well, a one possession game and last time we got down a one possession, uh, Maxwell ran one back for about 90 yeah. yards. So let's hope that doesn't happen again. Obviously, probably be the kicking away from him, as we saw yep. happen with Mr. Uh, Devin Hester so many times in his early career with the Bears. Uh, was she just telling me earlier that he wasn't like Devin Hester? If you would listen to what I was saying, I was saying uh, kicking away from him is what happened many times early in his uh, career. The uh, opponent's special teams would 
playing against them. So you can draw comparisons, but I can't. No. No. All right. I, I see. I see where we stand here. Christy is here to kick, and he will kick it away from Maxwell again, even though it kind of looks like it might have gotten to him. And <laughs> there's another return. Nice spin move, and he gets to the 50-yard line. That was it's a back uh, Nedlard, is it? Eglund. Edlund. 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 So he scores two touchdowns early, and we forget his name. Nice return there. To I think the 50, Edlund though. putting up fantasy numbers here. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. One on the. So Bray with a couple backs in the backfield. One of the first times all night we've seen that formation. Here's a snap, and he hands it off. And there's a nice run there. That's Bozek. A lot here uh, tonight, so look for him to keep on doing big, big things and uh, producing for the I hope or, so. Excuse me, for the Eagles. He seems like a special player. Really could be. Uh, AC's got... A lot of game changes with the quarterback being number one, but all the skill players outside of that are really making things happen. Yeah, so here's the handoff to Edlin. And he's up the left side. He's got some more running room. And he is in there. Seemed like like almost zero defense was played on that play. Yeah, well, right. you know. <laughs> um, um, he seemed like he, he went to the left side and there was – Nobody there. Well, just the problem for the Wolfpack here is anytime that they get close, they're unable to make a stop uh, defensively. They'll just put themselves in a big hole, in a in a bigger hole. Excuse me. Obviously, not really what you want, but uh, it looks like the way that this game's being played. Not to say that they're out of it. They've got plenty of time left in a very capable offense, but uh, just not not what we're accustomed to seeing. They have to be mentally tough and have to be able to make some plays. So let's see what they can do. So they get their 14-point lead back. And uh, the offensive showdown continues with 9.42 left in the third quarter. <laughs> Fired up players on the, the sideline there. Edlund with three touchdowns on the day. Number seven is just fired up right now. Nick Edlin. He's making plays here. Making some big time plays. So they will kick it back. And uh, Dan McMahon, the, the sophomore, is actually back with Brendan McNally. And they, they've got three people back. I believe all the way on the right is Luke Sonnen. So it's Sonnen, McNally, and McMahon. Who's that? And here's the kick. And it is to Sonnen. Who will try and take it up the middle. And uh, he's off. My Luke. The middle. Nice, nice run there. He gets to around the 40. Got a few more yards than what was expected. So first and 10, and a fresh uh, possession here for the Wolfpack. As they try to get the lead back down to, or the deficit back down to seven, and he is sacked oy, oy, for a loss. Oy, oy. Second and 11. Heck, Bozak once again getting in there making a play. It seems oh, yeah. like they've got their core group of players that play both sides of the ball, and they're making plays. Well, we've sure heard a lot of names here uh, tonight quite often, and that would be uh, Bozak, Edlund, Maxwell. Bray, obviously. And uh, power QB, Austin Bray. 
And uh, Coolidge looking to pass. It's complete to Frank. DeLeo. There's a flag. Do you see anything? Uh, uh, not really th that I could see, but uh, we'll just have to see what this is right here. What? <laughs> Let's see what it is here. And it is on the Wolf Pack. I'll move that one back. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I downloaded that app on Did you? Uh, <laughs> no. They won't. <laughs> Ryan Coolidge looking to pass as he scrambles to the left side and he's got still got some running room he gets pushed out of bounds so they had a long way to go second and 26 oh now obviously that's a big time penalty that's another 15 yarder yeah. so really Can't hate to see that for the offense you know that's just sloppy Third and 15, 17, gain a nine by the Coolidge keeper. It's really just a big 15 yarder is just probably. Eight thirty left and it's screen up to Delio. Delio looks to pass. So it's a screen pass to Delio. Trickery, we saw, um, who do we see? There's somebody, we oh, saw new, the Cincinnati Bengals. It's uh, not what uh, I was thinking of. Well, that's, uh, I saw in the Bengals game against Atlanta this past week. Same play was run by the Bengals. And Mohamed Sanu, who's a wide receiver, went downfield on an absolute dime. Perfect pass. Same play that we saw right there. Obviously, the outcomes were a little bit better different. Than, better than Dalton can do? Well, I mean, it was a beautiful pass, so not really what you'd expect from a receiver, but. So back to punt is Chris Creed. We saw him booming him during the halftime. And it's a pretty good one. Takes an Eagles bounce. And they'll pick it up there. I don't know why they were scrambling to get that ball. They're saying he touched it. I think they think reason. that it hit his foot. Well, it wasn't even close. I, well, it wasn't even close to touching an Eagles player. <laughs> but it's first and ten, Eagles. Aust, uh, from the 38. See what Bray can do. He'll bring the Eagles offense back out on the field. March effortlessly down their last huh. drive for a touchdown. See if the Wolfpack can... Uh, Make some plays here. I mean, that's kind of what we always talk about is uh, the ability to make big plays at opportune times. Absolutely. Big opportunity here to swing the momentum of the game and get back in it. Here's a snap. It's a handoff to Edlund again, and he keeps running, and he's taken down. So nice defense. Just running through the whole defense with the stiff arms until the big man Frank DeLeo could come in and take him down. Talking about our pep rally again earlier, the coach had an air horn. And apparently during practice, he blows that air horn. And he time says, to go to work. Time to go to work. <laughs> Haven't heard the air horn at any of the games yet this oh. year that we know of. That thing's pretty loud. Yeah, I mean, I would assume that we could hear it if uh, we could sure hear that drum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thing's still pounding away. Whoever is just not getting tired. Uh, second and ten. And uh, Bray will keep it himself over the middle. Oh, and it's almost picked off there by Burek. It was deflected off his hands and caught. Oh. By number nine for the Eagles, that is Dustin Barrett. That's a new name. Dustin, his first reception of the day there. Uh, Frankie just upset with himself, or uh, excuse me, Lewis uh, upset with himself after letting that one go through his hands. And uh, just nice and easy for, uh, not for Dustin there. No, Dustin Barrett. 
to go and haul that one in. It was by no means an easy pick for Burek, but he, one that he could have had. And there's the handoff to Edlund. And uh, gain Is that ball of, out? No, it's not. Gain of three? Yeah, it looked like the ball almost came out there. But uh, but Bray on that last play, on that big completion up to Barrett, uh, just a beautiful play action there. Really fooled everyone, including myself. So uh, all-purpose weapon out there. So it was a pretty good pass, too. But yeah, it was. You know, obviously, Lewis is a good player as well, and he was able to break that one up. Unfortunately, it just wasn't able to. Wasn't able to fall. Another handoff. That one's to Bosick, and he'll take it. Looks like it still has not reached the first down marker. It's close. It's third and short here, but. Yeah, third and about two coming up. You know, in the, sec in the third quarter, in the second half, they've been using that two-back backfield, and they've been running the ball a lot lately. And it seemed like on that play action, that was the first time where they tried to fool the Wolfpack defense into a pass because they, they were so used to the pass in the first half, and they've been going with the run in the second half oh, trying I to mean, catch up by surprise. I think that they've picked up some nice confidence in their, uh, in their ground game here. So they bring out the chains to see if it is a first down, and it looks like it is not. Just by... Inches. Oh, they do call it first down. So the nose of the ball just got past there. That's a game of inches, this, uh, this old game of football. That's what we saw there. It's a little old game. So the clock keeps running. So we're winding down on six minutes left in the third. And Bray with a fresh set of downs. We'll take the snap. It's fumbled. And let's see who's, who's got the ball. It's the Wolfpack. So a bad snap there. And the Wolfpack capitalizes. Narco came up with that uh, the, on the big junior. Out of St. Clement. Oh, there's that big play that we've been talking about. It. See if that D was sure fired up. Oh, yeah. to see what they can do now with the offense back out onto the field. And it's a handoff to McNally and he's off to the races. On, and let's see, it is a first down. Is That that ref is giving some pretty emphatic first down calls. He takes one step, throws the hand out there. And it's, uh, it's a nice call. Well, do you remember last week when we had that one ref just launch the flag oh, about yeah. 25 yards? <laughs> <laughs> and that happened in the NFL, too. This guy yeah, just take his yeah, flag. Yeah, during the Bears preseason yeah, game. That was solid. It's perfect, perfect oh. fundamentals. Yeah, good, good form. And it looks like 57 on the Eagles jumped there. Neutral zone infraction. Who's that? 57 on the Eagles. Joe Betterman. So could, could be uh, a better man when it comes to the snaps. Ha ha. I'm not even gonna force a laugh there. Right, well, no. That was pretty weak. Who knows? Maybe Sean spit up some Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> better. <laughs> First and five. <laughs> here for the Wolfpack. After that, false start. And it's a pass. Looking uh, to that fade route again, and it's got to be P.I., and it is. Flag is thrown as Sonnen was tackled by number four of the Eagles. That's Ryan Burke. Yeah, Enough laundry out on the field right now to, to... Are you trying to finish a joke here that's just not working out too well? No, I'm not sure where that was going, but... Uh, Needless to say, point. there's a lot of flags out there. Uh, I got to work on that one. Yeah, write it up. Think about it. Bring it back next week. Yeah, you know, I just spend up. Uh, sometimes I'm up until like 3, 4 in the morning trying <laughs> to write jokes for. For the broadcast? Uh, for the broadcast. Hopefully next week it'll be 
polished, oh, ready we'll see to go. What we can do. So first and ten from the uh, Churdy Tree yard line. It's another red zone uh, reference. Tree, Churdy Tree. In the third quarter. And here's the snap. Looking to pass. All He's right. scrambling. And it's out Get to out. the end zone. Sorted! Oh, oh, it's bobbled and not caught. He had it. He bobbled it. And once you touch that football, the defense can wrap you up and tackle you. That's exactly what happened. So Sonnen cannot make the play, and that would have been that would have made the game real interesting. Well, it but bounced right off his numbers, and after he after he touches it, you know he is fair game. And uh, in the D back, that'd be number four, Ryan Burke was uh, wrapped him up uh, before he was able to get his hands on it. So nice play by Burke there, uh, saved a touchdown without any doubt. But uh, obviously for Sonnen, you have to bounce right back after that. Uh, after that drop. And Burke bounced back after that PI call, but there's a handoff to McNally. Third and seven coming up here. Gain of three, I believe. And we might be within field goal distance, maybe, for Michael Christie. Third and six. And Coolidge looking to pass again. It's over the middle, and it's complete Ooh. to Frank immediately tackled. Frank taking a licking, but uh, taking a hit to make a play. Real close to that first generous spot. Yeah. yeah and wow. it, that Eagles coach is hacked off, as that spot definitely was generous. Well, I'll say myself, that's not, a, that's not a good spot at all, but, you know, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Helps us. First and 10 from the 23. Four minutes left in the third. And it looks like the Eagles are trying to last second communications. He's looking to pass. It's been, and he's taking himself off the right side. And it's a first down. It looks like a horse Little collar. Horse collar, come on. No flag called. It's like up there. So first and 10 on the run by Coolidge, found some running room and took off. First and goal. Let's put up another six on the board, another seven. Well, Ryan sure made a nice play. We got first and goal now, nine yard line. Is that guy blocking your view at all? Mm -mm. If there was ever a time to punch it in, it is right now. That's for sure. Let's see what they can do. And here's a snap, it's a handoff. Come on. Who is that? That's number 32. That's Max, it's gonna be Max Ponholt, sir. According to our football analyst, Annabella Coe, they're in a dead spot here. <laughs> she knows her football, so I'm gonna take her word for it. And they run the same play. It's the Leo, and he's in there. The dead spot works. And it's now 35 to 27 as the yes is going again. The foam finger yes chant. Whole new ball game now. 316 left in the third. Let's see if Chrissy can tack on this extra point and then we are a seven point ball game. Well then let's see if we can string a stop together after the touchdown. That's kind of been our weakness, if you ask me, for most of most of the day is uh, defense. I agree with you there. And Christie's kick is up, and it's good. So he's perfect on extra points here today. Sure is a real weapon when you have a when you have an anchor kicker like Michael Christie. Oh yeah. No, uh, Chris Creed as well is uh, also a good kicker, but uh, better punter than he is a kicker. Yeah, it seems that they've been using uh, Christie here so far, so far today. But, like, if you see the Bears, you see Robbie Gold, who's just lethal from just about anywhere. Oh, yeah. It just really changes the game. He's been real, real solid for a real long time for the Bears. And we're going to go ahead. Our uh, our stats man, Sean Grant, has provided us with a trivia question of the day. And that is, Teddy, where did Robbie Gold attend college? That's a tough question. 
Uh, can you give me a hint? Ask Siri. Ask Siri. Can you give me a hint? Well, uh, recently I've had some big scandals. Uh, a couple of years ago. Penn State? Penn State, there you go. There's a nitty line. The Big Ten member? And we will kick it away again. The fans, the visitor fan section for Aurora Christian looks a lot more solid than Lawrence's did last week as there are about yeah, four for, for sure. Lawrence. And they're do the onside kick, and that was not a great onside kick. Yeah, there comes a, There's a flag thrown. Okay. Um, well, uh, 15 yarder. I just had the man up front for uh, for AC just swallow that ball, and somebody came in and put a beating on him. Can't just do that. It's a free 15 if I've ever seen it. Trying to knock oh, the ball rough. out, trying to make that the play, but you have to be careful out there with what you're doing as well. So the Eagles trying to protect their seven point lead and add to it. Sorry. And uh, set in motion. And Come Bray on. will take it himself nice and move. run it. He breaks a couple tackles. Nice Ooh. tackle there. It jukes right around Max Bonhol. Let's see who uh, that was. Karen there. What was that Mulcairn 55? Oh, no, that was number 55. Is uh, That's Bowback, right? That would be Bowback. But uh, he juked his way around. Uh, Max Bonholtz and Pat Mulcairn right at the line there for uh, able to make a play out of it. Gain of nine on the play, second and one. Coming up. And uh, Edlund. Goes up and Bray will take it himself and muscle his way to a first down. He bowled over a couple of kids in the process. Gargano able to hold on and drag him down. Tag team by Mr. Bobek and Nick Gargano. Uh -oh. So the defense is mainly led by seniors and it's flip flopped on offense, mainly led by juniors. You got Delio in there on the offense, but Coolidge, Weber, and Sonin seem to play a big part on offense. Also got McNally at half back there, so he That's plays true. a big role. But uh, doesn't quite seem to me it's as large a role as it has been in the past. Oh, yeah. And Bray has it again. He's looking to pass. He gets Come pressured on, by Gargano, and he scrambles away again. He'll rush it and just run out of bounds at the 20-yard line. So Gargano pressures, but he is good at evading those coming at him. Well... Need a big play here. Need a big play here once again. So second and four after they scramble for six. Under two minutes left in the third. Here's a snap and they hand it off to Edlund. Edlin finds a hole and nice Ooh. tackle there by Bobak. Just, just look as Bobak's been all over the ball here so far. Not tonight. He did get the first down. So move chains. They're at the eleven yard line. It's first and ten. Yeah, the TV that we're supposed to have filming the game, I think it was left out in the rain last week during that game, so not, I think it. Think it's on its last leg here. That's what a Toshiba like 1984 television. Might be one for the thrift shop. Yeah, I think it's finally thrift about time. Shop. Bray will take it himself. Or <laughs> being <laughs> informed that it's 2005, <laughs> but uh, not a whole lot of yards on the Bray <laughs> keeper. <laughs> Thanks to our historian, uh, uh, Teddy Hans, for the spot on 
accuracy of his ability to date uh, Toshiba Televisions. Off by uh, uh, 21 years, but you know, you know, he's trying. He's learning more and more every day. <laughs> Just kind of watching the big guys do it, and yeah. uh, second and nine, and he scrambles, looks out to the left, and it's short and complete. So third and nine coming up. This would be a big stop for the Wolfpack. They could hold them to just a field goal. Sure would be. Well, we've been talking about the whole game, making a stop after they score. I don't think that they've done it yet, so it would be really nice if they could, uh, they could stop up here. 36.8 on the clock. If they were to bring in the field goal, you know, it's been shaky at best so far. Oh, yeah. Anything can happen there. Here's a snap and looking to pass. He it's the it. Is it picked off? No. No. Looks like there could have been an opportunity for one. Either way, that's that kind of stop that you want. And it looks like they are bringing on the field goal unit as they're going to bring in uh, Van Brisey to, or Van, Van, Van Gleesey, Van Gilsey. Van Gils. Van Gils. He is silent. I've got no clue. Oh, we're just going to call him Nick. So uh, <laughs> Nick's on. For this field goal, making some noise. We got the sideline making some noise, trying to create some pressure, and the kick is up, and it's hit the post. So no good, and everybody's all pumped up. Another touchdown, and we got a tie ball game. So there's what I'm talking about. You know, the the field goal unit has been shaky at best, and she just went and dinged one right off the post there. So uh, not what you want if you're AC, but... Uh, But either way, Wolfpack's within one. One touchdown. It'll be in a tie ball game. It'll get you where you want to go. It'll get you a free spot. So here's the snap. Coolidge hands it off. And oh! oh! McNally gets tripped up. And if he wouldn't have been tripped up, he would have been gone. At least McNally is a game-saving tackle away from a tie ball game. Crowds getting into it. Quarter, teams like getting into it. See if they can run one more before uh, before uh, quarter's over here. Got 10 seconds to do it. They will. And it's a handoff really for nothing there from McNally. So Clock keeps sticking down, and the third quarter will be over. And this is an interesting ball game we got here. Sure Two is. good football games in a row from the Wolfpack. Fun to watch. And we're only down a touchdown. Well, this once again, this will be a close one. So it was last week. This time, Wolfpack was ahead, and they, I don't like to say blow their lead, but they blew their lead. Let's see if we can... Uh, can reverse that and get the get the Eagles to blow their lead now. Wolfpack yeah. have the talent to have excuse me have the talent, the skill, and the coaching to be able to do it. So uh, just gotta believe them. They just gotta believe in themselves and push that ball downfield. And last week was rough because we were up and they scored with like less than a minute left in the game to take the lead and they ended up winning. Yeah, that one really hurt. Been kind of a must-win game to oh, yeah. Get to try play. to push into the playoffs, and then also uh, it's been the first game here in many, many years. So a fresh 12 minutes put up on the clock for the last quarter. Pretty cool view of the skyline, blocked by a tree here. So not a, not a great view here, and our bleacher in our bleacher seats. Come on, Peck. Second and eight here for Ryan Coolidge and his offense. And he'll keep the ball, looking to pass it. He's got zone in, and it's, in, it's complete. Hey, Luke. A great pass on the run by Coolidge. Sonen hauls it in. Play action boot there by uh, by Coolidge. 
fooled everybody and then just put a bullet into Luke Sonnen. That's a big gain. Huge gain. It's close to 20. Probably is 20. It's, I think it's more than 20. Anyway, way, that'll bring up a fresh a set of downs for the pack. And there's a and lot, there's lot of, of movement, movement prior to the play. Hopefully it's not on us. Although it is looking like it will be on us, and it is. <laughs> False start against the pack. So first and 15 coming up for the pack. Well, I said this is where this is where it all counts. This would be a huge, huge drive here if they could tie this game up. Pitch in, it's oh, fumbled. Get that Picked ball. up there by Weber, but that's another big loss. That'll push him back even more. Tried to pitch it to Weber, didn't work out. So second and way long. You have to be careful there. Can't get too cute with those plays. You just got to do what's simple and what works. Second and 20-something. Second and 24. <laughs> a minute has gone down in the fourth quarter. And a big play here is needed. It's a snap. Fans are looking for a flag, and McNally cannot get much. If you look on the AC sideline over there, number 91, looks like he's got some, I can't it almost see seems like he's got a perm. <laughs> oh, it's either just ridiculous flow off the 91. No, no, it is, it can't be that. No. <laughs> Third and 34, actually. That's a, no, third and 18, excuse me. We're on the 34-yard line, and there's the pitch to McNally. Bobbled again, and he'll just fall down. It's fourth down. It's just not working. Eleanor, not working too well. Just want to take a quick time out. Uh, let all you viewers know all the other sports covered by Wolfpack Sports here. We're not just about football, and Ted, What's on the what's on the slate here? We got basketball, you got baseball, you got volleyball, you've got water polo. I can't think of anything else. What's that one people want? I you know, it's not coming to me. That's a low snap. Creed will take it, punt it, and uh are you trying to plug your own team, the hockey team? I'm not trying to, I'm just letting the people know what they got. A little head start, exactly. Thank you, Nora. I mean, Nora gotta know. often makes a trip out to Johnny's West Ice House to watch the hockey team play. Annabelle is saying she does, but I've never seen her there in my life. <laughs> and the uh, Eagles will start on the 15-yard line, first and 10 for them, and Austin Bray. Here's a snap. And they're looking to go deep. Uh oh. It's over the middle. And it's incomplete. Good defense there by number five for the Wolfpack. Nick back. Bradley. That's Nick Bradley. So I like to call him Booby, named um, after Murray. character on Friday Night Lights. I've never seen that show, but I heard it's good. Friday Night Lights. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they should have a broadcasting crew in that show. Hey, they really should. Uh, call us up. And, uh, a remake. Have a little re revamp. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll star. A little, uh, little spin-off featuring the, <laughs> featuring, <laughs> featuring the Wolfpack <laughs> Sports crew. <laughs> Second and ten. What's that? <laughs> so, 
<laughs> well, it looks. Is there a penalty called or what? I, I can't tell you. First and 17. That's kind of odd. Didn't see what happened there, but it's Bray in the handoff to Edmund. Good stop. There you go. So Frank DeLeo with the tackle, Holmes. As we do every uh, game, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the Maxwell Show on 97.9 The Loop. Very funny, guys. I haven't heard Maxwell on there in a while, actually. I'm surprised they haven't given us a shout out yet. Yeah, I'm waiting. It's a little, I'm waiting. little disappointing, but you know. So second and long for the Eagles. Here's the snap, and they're going over the middle. Yeah. Caught. Ooh. Nice play there by Maxwell. Speaking of Maxwell, the Maxwell show, we got Maxwell, Jacoby Maxwell making the play. No, nah, Jacoby. Jacoby. Well, there's uh, <laughs> Maxwell there, made a nice play, nice catch. Number 81, great wide receiver number. If I played football and if I was a receiver, I'd probably go with 81 myself. That's what my little brother I don't think you could make it wore. as a wide receiver, to be I'm honest. just letting you know, <laughs> if, if I did ever encompass that skill set, which I haven't yet, and I probably never will, you know, I'm, I'm just more of uh, just more of just an all-around force. You think so? Force. You think so? No, I, <laughs> I wish. No, but you're not bad at throwing the ball. Eh. Second and four. If I were to play anywhere, it'd probably be probably be linebacker. Or left bench. Second linebacker if I can pick up some speed, which is doubtful. <laughs> second, and, second and four. 7.35 left in the fourth in the game. All right, Andy, relax. Here's a snap, and Bray will keep it himself. Scramble for close to the first down. Not quite there, though. The game, the game will take ever, every time it's clock stop. Seven minutes and counting. Time for the D the to game. make a play. Third and three. Let's see what they can do. Come on, boys. Maxwell set in motion. High snap. And get him. Get him. They do stop him. Get him. Great play there by the Wolfpack. Group tackle there. And they will. Odds are sent out the punting team. Are they? I, th I think so. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Bray is still out there. Is Bray the punter? Yeah, Bray's the punter. And he's got a boot. Unless, I will unless tell they, you. Unless they trick us a little bit. Let's see. He's uh, an all-around player, that's for sure, and uh, he can punt as well. Here's a long snap, and he does punt, and that's, <laughs> oh, that's a great punt. Wow. And it'll go touched at the 25-yard line. You talk about a beauty. It's, it's just about a 50-yard punt. Kid can do a lot of things on the football field. So... Uh, this drive is obviously important. Under the lights with a big home crowd supporting you. 5.54 left in this game. Only down by one. Got a chance for a big upset here. I mean, that this is what these boys play for. Anytime that you strap up those pads, you dream to be in these moments. So let's see what they can do and make something majestic happen. <laughs> Coolidge looking to pass. Over the middle, caught by Sonin, so there's a start. And a first down, there's a there's flag thrown. In. Another 15. What do you think, though, on the Wolfpack? No, that's without a doubt on AC. There's a, there's a D-back came in and popped Sonnen right in the head after he made that catch. Hey, 
Aurora Christian. A is a defense. D back. Defensive back. Come on, figure it out. I thought you still got to say so a dumb penalty <laughs> taken by the Eagles. Just not disciplined. That's a freebie 15. First and 10 from the 47. We're in our own territory now. Or we're in the Eagles territory, excuse me. And McNally for a gain of a few yards. Picked up a few there by Brennan. Yeah, not bad. They're second and eight. Not the most explosive play, but it's effective. No. Picks up a few yards. Clock's just uh, taken away. Got 5-10 left here. Let's just see what they can do. Let's see what the boys are made out of. This has got to be a great moment for Ryan Coolidge, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, as a quarterback, this is exactly what you want to lead your team on a game-tying drive, potentially game-winning. McMahon They're audacious in enough. And McNally with another carry. Nothing much doing there. Another couple of yards. As a huge third down comes up. <laughs> Quick shout out to our freshman helping us out here, Alistair Scully. Another Sacred Heart grad. This is just really doing great things. Third and six. There's, there's 4.15 left in the game. Whistle Nora. is blown. It's a timeout on the Wolfpack. Trying to talk things over as this third down is huge. All right, well, it's like timeout call there. Ted, Ted, you know who called that timeout? As someone, <laughs> some cheerleader just did a standing backflip. That was, that was cool. I can't, I can't, I am not flexible. I can't do a somersault. I cannot do a somersault. I can do a flat foot triple backflip with a twist. <laughs> But and just, land on but, your pinky. But I can only do it when people see me. Or when, when, pe when people at don't home see me. when people aren't watching. At, at home in my room by myself. Yeah, I nail like 95 yard field goals. I mean, I mean, I just get scared under pressure. Yeah, so. no. And you don't want to show off either. Yeah, well, sp speaking, You're of, humble. speaking of 90 yard field goals, you see Steven Samkos of the Tampa Bay Lightning shot a 91 yard field goal. The, really? The hockey puck. It was That's in, solid. A, in a promotional ad for Bauer. Uh, and it's juggled Whoa. there by Weber, and he's stuffed. So not a good play call in the timeout. No, we didn't. It's a good observation, and uh, Mike Weber looks like he's a little shaken up after that hit. That was a big hit. Fourth and ten. That was a loss of four on the play. She got and hit pretty good there. Oh, and he's down. He, he slams the turf in anger as he is not pleased at getting hit. He's down, trainer's out. Mike Weber is down on the field. The junior who is very, very important to our squad. Yeah, we do. He sure took a big hit there. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like they tried to go with, with like a reverse. <laughs> He does get up under his own power. That's good to see. Hopefully he'll be all right there. He, he sure took a pretty big hit. Kind of was making his way towards the sideline and just said, no, what? Just, just give me a second and catch my breath. I'll get back. So fourth and ten, and here it is. Don't want to say this is your ball game, but this is your ball game. And it's... Oh, oh, he is oh. labeled. <laughs> Sacked by 39. 39. Jeremiah Wright. He's made some plays today. Junior, the junior cornerback. And 
he hit Coolidge hard. Yeah. You know, Aurora Christian's got some players that can really, really play football. And we have hung in this game. And it's good to see, you know, Aurora Christian is a team that can play football. And even if we lose this game, it is a marker to say that we can hang with teams that have great players like the Eagles oh, do. Oh, you know what? This is a, this is a big warm-up for Loyola next week. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, handoff there by Edland. And gain of four, maybe? Four or five? As I was just saying about Loyola, you know, this is kind of what, you know, playing these big name teams, you know, big teams who can make some plays and make some noise and skilled players, well coached. You just get the whole package with these guys. Andy Weber's Second looking five. perplexed down there. Trying to see what's going on. Looks like, did he sneak through like a hole in the fence? Andy, what you doing? What you doing? He's, just, he's, he's cleaning he's, up a little he's bit. Cleaning up. Because last Gonna last week our cleanup took about an hour and a half in the rain, in 40 degrees. It was cold and wet. And so I was we started cleaning up in the third quarter, and we else. ended well after the game ended. There's some tears shed. There's some tears. <laughs> we were we were on the verge. Not too please. Yeah, the wolves done is thinned out throughout the game. We got some young fans and some wolf pack paraphernalia. And uh, hopefully they join the St. Ignatius community a few years down the road. We got the cheerleaders trying to rally the troops. You know, Rob Golston is one of my favorite people at this school. Favorite human beings. He, he's just, just a man. Just such a great guy. Wears two watches. <laughs> Where he <laughs> is pretty, For some pretty, reason, pretty, yeah. pretty unorthodox. But, uh, just Quick thing about him before this play gets no, off. Oh, yeah, hold on. It's second if I win on time for this right now. And the snap. And it's a pass over the middle. Caught. Get and him. they stop him short of the goal line. But that is a nice play there by Bray. Mm -hmm. And they're real close to the score. And he's down. We're getting down to it now. Oh, that might be the dagger. I haven't punched it in yet, but they've gotten pretty close. And uh, there's an Eagle player down. <laughs> well, wide receiver's down. Obviously a lot of concern for him right now. Never want to see any player hurt, no matter what team they're on. The Eagle sideline and the offensive huddle is down on their knees, except hoping for, that he's okay. Except for number eight. I don't know what he's done. Seemed like he was leading a prayer or something. Seemed that way. An Eagle. Mm -hmm. Eagle has fallen. Hopefully he's okay. He's still down. I, mean, I, I think it was the wide receiver who caught that, caught that ball. It was. I uh, saw so, uh, Nick Bradley made that tackle. Maybe he landed awkwardly on him. <laughs> Twisted an ankle. I think that's what happened. I don't really want to speculate here, but uh he's sitting up, looks like. Maybe he'll need some help getting up. I think it was lower body injury as hockey with tournament. <laughs> so he does get up. He is hobbling a little bit. That's number eight. It's a tight end, uh, Dustin Barrett, number nine. Big boy himself. Six foot, six foot, uh, 230. 230, you said? 230. There, he's pointing at the head. The coach is pointing at the head, so I think hopefully it's not a concussion. So he's still trying to be helped off the field here. We're, we all hope it's not a concussion, but the coach is pointing at the head. So it is first and goal. Down there, 
Here's the snap, and it's a handoff to Edland, and a ball's Ball loose! Goes. It's recovered in the end zone. Interesting to see what they'll do here. By who? By the Eagles. Looks like and he they was mark down. It back. So they say he was down before the ball came loose. Had that knee down. So so second ball contact when that ball came out. Gargano trying to stir up the crowd. <laughs> as they were a little quiet there. A big part of the crowd to make some noise. So Can't one force the offense into a false start. Hard to communicate it out there when there's raucous fans. <laughs> it's like Seattle. And no. The ball's out. No, he was down. Ball's out. He was down. I'd love to see the Wolfpack get the ball, but it looked like Bray was down. It's but that was a good stop. Clock keeps running. Minute 20 left in the game. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> is, that a, is that a longest yard reference? It is. It's Chris Berman? Chris Berman. Back, 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 back. No. He uh, should not be doing the home run back. derby is all I have to say. He could go all the way, and it is a Wolfpack ball. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> it is Wolfpack ball? It is Wolfpack ball. No. I, I sure think it is. No got way. We've got a buckle nine left here. Time for a 99-yard drive. How sweet now, would that be? I do not think we have the ball. I do. They, they got the offense out there. Now there's McNally on the sideline. We do not have the ball. I just gestured like a... Oh. No, we do not have the ball. Come on, ref. So third and goal on the one. Time for a stop. Third and goal. Make it happen. Get loud crowd. This is where we need you. Come on, make some noise. You can hear all the fans just going nuts. <laughs> and here's the snap. It's a handoff, and Get he him. stopped! No, no. They're saying touchdown! But it was close. Saying he got in there, he pushed that ball across the field as it looks like Johnny Tucci is livid out there. And they are signaling touchdown. Edlund with his Edlund with his fourth touchdown of the game. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's any instant replay in high school, sadly. I wish there was. But there's a timeout. Could be a big waiver wire pickup for your high school fantasy team. <laughs> Mr. Edwin, Edland, been screwing that up all night. Edwin, think of Edwin Jackson, who gave up six runs in the first inning today. After he was reactivated <laughs> from the DL. Ah, that Edwin. So the Cubs dropped two to the Dodgers the first two games of the four-game set. They chased Kershaw after five, though, which is pretty impressive. Still lost. Kershaw picks up his 20th win. Interrupted his streak of uh, so many games with uh, eight innings pitched in a row, though. Well. Dodgers built one 14 to 5. Well, they're coming out for two here. So they will come out for two just in case we make a miraculous uh, two touchdown run. Oh. Bang. So here's the snap. Maxwell set in motion, and there's a flag. It's on the Eagles. Push that back a little bit, make that two point conversion a little bit tougher. The kicker is not on the field. A minute three left in the game. Aurora Christian up 41-28. Mm -hmm. And they will go for two.
Here's a snap, and Bray looks, looks, finds his man. It's Maxwell. Nice catch. And there's the two-point conversion. Uh, Jacoby Maxwell just making plays out here all day. Making it happen. He sure is a good player, huh, Teddy? He sure is a good player, huh, Teddy? Great player. So you can either kick an extra point or go for two. Well, it's now 43-28 Aurora Christian Eagles. A minute three still on the clock as they will kick it away. And uh, that's about the game. So the homecoming game didn't go the way we planned. They're a tough team, though. We hung in there. Scored 28 points, which is... Uh, the best we've done it's a good all day year for the offense. It's a good day for the offense, but obviously the most important things will win. So the Eagles start out the year 4-0. We become 1-3. Oh Quick little birthday shout out to our pal here, uh, Nora Thompson. Turns uh, the big 1-2, 12 years old, <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> on this upcoming Tuesday. Sewn in back to receive. <laughs> uh, and he's taken down there by, uh, there's some after the play shoving there by Sponholtz. It's an exodus from the Wolves zone right now. Uh, drive home safe Chicago. Beep, 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 beep. You're not even a Bulls fan. Why are you using a Stacey King reference there? I like Stacey King. He's a good guy. You don't watch the Bulls. <laughs> All right, well, I don't watch the Bulls, and I'm proud I don't watch the Bulls. I watch the other team other than the United Center. Both teams should have a good year this year. Hopefully. Both see playoffs in the United Center, hopefully. Here's a snap, and Coolidge will get sacked. And the clock keeps ticking. <laughs> uh, second. The hurry up offense here with no, 40 seconds left trying to make something happen. Second and 15. And Coolidge can't find anybody. He's sacked again. Third and way long. 15 seconds left, and the pass is complete out to, uh, is that Mike Weber back on the field? Sorry That's about good the to see. vulgar uh, fans here. but uh, Annabella is just like spewing just <laughs> mean stuff at the Eagles. She well, just either way, will that do it? Bad sportsmanship. That yeah, won't do it. Coach O.C. pulling a John Harbaugh, calling a timeout with 2.1 seconds left. Down by two scores. Two. Well, not the outcome we wanted here no. uh, tonight. We got Loyola next week, Ted, and um, have to see a big fan support oh, next yeah. week for that. That's gonna be huge. Hopefully, Annabella and Nora will be back up in the booth. The booth. Air quotes Nora. around that since we're up in the bleachers. They have Nora stay healthy more than anything. Yeah. She came down with the with the trio of pneumonia, bronchitis, and mono. <laughs> trio of illnesses well glad to see her back and uh, here's the final play of the game come on right make it special make it special the pass out over the middle and it's incomplete and so there you have it here from the west side 43 Wolf to 28 is the final Wolfpack fall in this one but uh, uh thanks for all you tuning in Wolfpack Sports Network I'm Teddy Hans I'm Matt Berghoff and uh, we'll see you on the next broadcast against Loyola thanks thanks guys <laughs>